Good morning, Mr. O'Brien here. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, today, I want to go through uh, what lit class is going to look like this year. All right. So if you're watching this video, you are probably a remote learner. All right. But I want to let you know what lit class will look like in case you end up coming back to, you know, to in-person instruction. And if not, that's okay. Uh, but if you do, I want to go through what class is going to look like. Uh, and also, I mean, this is what we did in class today. So you're actually, you know, this will be what we did in school today. All right. So first thing I want to say, remote learners, keep submitting the attendance form. All right. That's very important. It's a great way for us to see, uh, for you to check in with us and for us to, uh, you know, to see that you guys are here, you know, virtually. Please email me if you have any questions. All right. You can message me on Google Classroom. That's totally fine. But to be honest, guys the and gals, the best way for you to get a hold of me is to send me a nice professional email. All right. So if you have any questions about an assignment or anything, just shoot me an email. All right. <clears throat> Obviously, you guys know I'm Mr. O. You know I'm looking forward to being your lit teacher. And every day, I promise I'm going to give you my very best. And that is what I expect out of you. All right, so come with that mindset of I want to get a little bit better, um, and we'll do just fine. We are here to get better, right? Here, virtual or in person, we are here to get better. We're here to get better at reading, writing, and speaking. The goal is to practice all three of those every single lit class. So for you guys at home, you know, the onus, you know, is going to be on you guys to stay on yourselves, right? If I say, hey, I want you to read this out loud, do it. Like, There's no way to get better uh, at presenting than by actually doing it. All right. And hopefully we can have some fun. That is the goal. All right. So that is why we are here in lit class. For my class every day, you got to have your lit folder and your lit notebook. Now, you know, at home, you definitely need your lit notebook. All right, and probably at home you also need your Chromebook, right? But again, this is more for in class. But even for you guys at home, you know you need your uh, your lit folder and your lit notebook. If uh, you you know you got to bring your book with you every day, and you should probably have your assignment notebook. Those are important things. For arrival to class, uh, it's pretty much the same. You come in, you take your assigned seat, you take everything off your desk except for your lit stuff, just like normal. Um, and you begin working on the bell work. All right. Now, remotely, you know, the bell work is the first thing you see when you start the video, right? But again, if you're thinking about, you know, what will school be like when I get back to school, well, that is what it's going to be like. You come on in, you take your seat, and you work on the bell work. So, absences. Again, this would be more if you were in person. Obviously, you guys are remote, uh, at least most of you are. But I was telling this to my class, you know, my students in class today. Um, which is if you're absent, I'm always going to post, uh, you know, my lessons online. So anytime you're absent, you can watch the posts, you know, let's say you had a little headache. Well, maybe later that, that day, you know, you start feeling better. Well, you could actually watch lit class and see what happened in class. All right. So, um, yeah, so definitely keep checking Google classroom for that and obviously I mean that's the way that all of your content is being delivered to you all right so we are going to launch reading workshop today all right we're working on writing a lot and we're going to be doing a lot of reading all right so we talked a little bit about writing workshop it's basically just where you write a lot well reading workshop is basically where you pick books you want to read and you read them all right, seventh and eighth graders, we did this last year. Sixth graders, this might be new to you, but basically you pick books that you want to read and you read them. And then you recommend them to your friends because that's what good friends do. Good friends help their friends find good books, books that they want to read. What? Super, you know, not too difficult, right? Sounds, you know, oh my gosh, how crazy. But obviously it's not, right? I'm just being sarcastic. The, one of the main goals of Reading Workshop is to read a lot. All right, that is one of the main goals. We want to read a lot. We want to get better at building stamina, which is reading for a longer period of time. And the only way to do that 
is you know is to practice, right? That's one of the only ways to do to get better at reading for longer periods of time. And we want to you know discern for ourselves what kind of stories do we like, right? What genre do we like the most? What genres do we not like? No one wants to read books that they don't want to read, obviously. I want you guys to find books that you really love and you want to read them. So I want to empower you to find your own books. You know, I'll help you. Your friends will help you. But I want to empower you to find books that you want to read, all right? And one of the ways that, one of the ways that we do that is by discovering different genres, reading different genres, and really you know, deciding what kinds of books we like. My expectations, gotta have your book, all right? Now, for those of you at home, the expectation is gonna be that you're gonna go out and get books. Um, if you email me, uh, maybe we can work something out. Maybe, you know, you could rent a book from me at school, but, you know, your mom or dad's gonna have to come pick it up. I think probably what would work even better would be you ask mom and dad, could you take me to the library, all right? I'm gonna go through a ton of books today, and you know, during our lesson. Um, and, you know, I'm going to have you jot them down. So maybe you uh, ask mom or dad, hey, can we buy this book? If it sounds really good and you want to buy it, that'd be awesome. Um, if not, maybe you say, hey, mom and dad, can we go to the library? Definitely check the library website first um, to make sure they have it at the library you're going to. And, you know, I might just show you how to do that right now. Let's do it. I hadn't planned on this, so forgive me for a second. I'm going to have to open up a new tab. So I'm going to go to the uh, the St. Joe County Public Library, all right, which I look it up a lot. But if you just type in St. Joe County Public Library, it pops up. And here's their website, all right. So if you like any of the books that we talk about, like one of the books that I love is called Scythe, Scythe. You literally just search it, and then it will tell you uh, which branch of the library has that book. So you could download it as an audio book, which I had no idea. I might actually listen to it. Be oh, that's actually in German. Never mind. Don't do that. That'd be crazy. But here we go. So they have the ebook. You could download it. If you have a Kindle, you could download it. You could actually read it on your computer too. Um, but you, they also, let's see how many there are. So it's available. Let's see where it's available. There are 11 copies, nine actually, that are available. Four of them are unavailable. We got five. So it looks like there's one at LaSalle, the Tut. And, you know, you can, you can place a hold on the book, which I'm not going to do right now because I own a copy. But anywho, I just wanted to show you guys that, um, because I know a lot of you at home, you know, one of the nice things about being in person is I have a lot of books right? Spend a lot of money on books because I want you guys to read books, you know, that you love. So I'm always buying books. Um, but anywho, uh, if there are any books that you think you might like, go get them from the library. That'd be awesome, right? Seventh and eighth graders, that's why we got library cards last year, so that you could rent books from the library. So one of my expectations is that you have your book every day. For you guys at home, I'm, my expectation is that you find books, right? You get them. I want you reading every day for 15 minutes, all right? So that's going to be your homework. It's going to be reading on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, all right? And, you know, you're going to have, you know, now that school is in person, you're only going to have lit class on Monday and Wednesday and Friday, right? If, you know, like the St. Francis schedule and then the Claire schedule, you know, like this week, the St. Claire schedule is only on Tuesday and Thursday, uh, and the next week, the St. Clair schedule, it's literally just every other day. But the thing I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that um, even if you don't have lit on Tuesday, I want you reading 15 minutes for homework on Tuesday. Does that make sense? If not, please let me know. But basically, for you guys at home, I want you reading each night at least 15 minutes a night. All right. And you'll actually see when I start posting videos of our lessons I'm going to be giving your classmates time to read in class. So I'm going to encourage you guys, you know, as you're watching these videos to be doing the same thing. Be reading along with your classmates. All right. Because that, that's how we build in this extra reading practice. But basically, I just wanted to point out your homework, not this week, but starting next week, your homework is going to be to read 15 minutes each day. 
All right, and then on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, just pick one of those days uh, over the weekend to do 15 minutes. Don't worry about the letters yet, but you guys are eventually going to be writing me letters about your book. All right, let's move on. This is a general view of what class will look like. We will read at the beginning of class. I'll walk around the room. I'll write down what page you guys are on. You guys virtually, I'm just going to trust that you guys are reading. All right, and it's up to you. If you want to get better at reading, you're going to read. Okay, um, and if you don't want to, then you won't. All right, but I'm not going to have you guys submit like a picture of the page you're on or something. That would that would be crazy and a waste of your guys' time. Again, if you want to get better at reading, you're going to read. And if you don't want to, that is your choice. You are hurting no one but yourself. All right, but I know that won't be a problem for any of you. All right, I've been so blown away by your guys' effort, so keep up the good work. You know, when I'm walking around the room, again, if you were in person, I might ask, hey, what do you think about that book? Then, during class, we'll have a short lesson on writing or on this reading skill. And then we will actually practice that skill. So that's a very rough idea of what class will look like. Now, for those of you who were in lit last year, I mean, that's what class was like all the time, right? You came in, you read for a while, I wrote down the page number, and we had a lesson, and then we practiced that lesson. That's what it's going to look like this year as well. Your homework that is due Friday, and I should edit this, this is for the A groups. All right, oops, sorry, friends at home. I haven't changed my PowerPoint yet for the uh, B groups. So the homework that is due Friday for the A groups, but actually it is due Monday for the B groups. Okay, because I'm going to see the A groups three times this week. I'm only going to see the B groups Tuesday, Thursday. So anywho, sorry about that, friends. So A groups, your homework is due Friday. B groups, yours is due Monday. I want you to have a book that you want to read. So you've got some time. Go to the library. Maybe you have a book at home. Maybe you shoot Mr. Owen an email and say, hey, could I have my mom come in? Maybe get this book or this book. That would be fine. But I want you to have a book that you want to read with you on your person by Friday if you're 8A, 7A, or 6A, or by Monday if you're 8B, 7B, or 6B. All right. One last thing I want to point out. This is really important for you guys at home. Any work that was assigned during these first three weeks is due on Friday. And it's not even that it's due on Friday. It's just that it will not be accepted after Friday. So if you have a missing lit assignment that I assigned during the first week, I, I'm not giving you any credit for it after Friday. So go back through, check PowerSchool, and if you have any missing assignments, make sure you complete those before Friday. All right. So not a lot of homework this week. The big thing is to make sure you have all your work turned in and that you get a book you want to read. So if you could flip to the very last page in your notebook, go to the front of that back page. All right. Up at the top, I want you to write the word someday books. All right, so again, this is the last page in my notebook, and I'm on the front of that last page. I want you to write the word someday books. Top right corner, I want you to write your goal. How many books are you going to read this year? As you can see, my goal is to read 47 books this school year. All right, so how many books can you read this school year? 47 is pretty ambitious, I'm not going to lie, but that's my goal. I'm going to see if I can do it. So what you're going to do is I'm going to talk about a ton of different books that you might be interested in. I want you to write down as many titles as you can, as many books that you can that you think you might like to read. All right, so jot them down on your list. So that way, when you go to the library, you know, uh, you know what you want to read. And when you finish a book, you're not just like, oh, what should I read next? You have a list. So let's start with The Schwa Was Here. I think this is the funniest book I have in my classroom. It is so funny. It's about this boy named Calvin Schwa who is basically invisible. If he was in the room and he was wearing a sombrero and a flashing, you know, like Rudolph nose, you wouldn't even notice him. 
which is a problem, all right? We like to be noticed. We don't want to be forgotten. But it seems like everything, you know, everything that the schwa does, he just ends up being forgotten. So that's the big conflict in that story. Um, but it is just absolutely hilarious. And all of my students, have, you know, love this book year after year. This is a book that I haven't recommended, but I really need to. And here I am doing it now. So this is called The Clay Marble. And it is all about the uh, uh, a civil war that took place in Vietnam. Um, this book is very similar to Number of the Stars, set during a war, told from the point of view of a young child, and basically the main characters, they live in Vietnam, and all of a sudden bombs start, start falling around their village, and they have to pack up everything, everything they own, and move to Cambodia to try to uh, avoid the war. So very powerful story. Let's move on. Maniac McGee. If you have not read Maniac McGee, you have to. It is so powerful. It is so funny. It's about this kid who is an absolute maniac. He runs from place to place, town to town. He's an orphan. And he's a legend, right? Kids, they hear about him. They like tell stories about him. It's a very powerful story also in that the town that Maniac McGee, that he runs into, uh, at the beginning of the story, it's split right down the middle. One side of the town is white and the other side is black. And nobody crosses that line except for Maniac McGee. All right, so it's a super powerful book. This is another book by the same author, and it's called Stargirl. Very similar to Maniac McGee, uh, except it's kind of the girl version of it. Stargirl, uh, her name is Stargirl. She's a very peculiar girl. And again, she's kind of like a legend. She shows up at school. She's a new girl. And her behavior is so strange. She's so nice that, you know, everyone starts to just, like, love her. The whole school. She's, like, the most popular person in school. Which is very interesting. Until, dun, 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 read on to find out. Hatchet. If you have not read Hatchet, you gotta read Hatchet. All right, if you love camping, you like being outdoors, this is a great book for you. All about surviving and persevering. Um, love Hatchet. Very powerful book um, and pretty exciting. Uh, definitely an edge-of-the-seat reader sometimes. And also, the main character is alone for a lot of the time, so other times it's not as fast. But I think every human being should read Hatchet. This is another hilarious book. If you uh, like things that are funny, which you should, Drum Soul Sanders Pie is an awesome book. It's about this uh, boy. He's in middle school. He's, uh, his name is Steven. He's in seventh grade, and one day he finds out his brother is really, really sick. He finds out his younger brother has cancer. So that is a huge conflict, obviously, and I cannot recommend this book enough Everyone reads this book. That's how good it is. Everyone is passing it to each other. Put this one down on your list, all right? If you read Drumskull Sanders Pie, there's a sequel, which is called After Ever After. <clears throat> now, After Ever After is a fabulous story. Um, and again, it's the sequel. It comes after Drumskull Sanders Pie. So if you like this one, you would love the sequel, all right? But I'm not going to tell you anything about it because it will give away the first book. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas is really sad, but it's also really powerful. Uh, it's about uh, two young boys living during the Holocaust in Poland, where the Holocaust actually took place. If you like books that are historical, uh, you would love this. Um, and if you like... Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. It's a very powerful story, but again, it's definitely um, an emotional read. So, anywho, what I want you to do is in your notebook, flip to the very front of your notebook. In class, I had everybody do this on a quick half sheet of paper, okay? Um, but go to the front of your notebook and quiz yourself. So jot down one, two, three, four. I did this in class just as another check-in to see how are we doing with point of view, right? I wanted to review it. We want to review this skill over and over until it is mastered, until we have it so perfectly that you don't even have to think about it anymore. 
So we're going to review, and I've got four short passages, and I want to know what is the point of view of each passage. All right, so number one, Spaceman Spartacus spoke through the communication device in his spacesuit. Chief O'Rourke, do you see anything moving in my vicinity? Spaceman Spartacus was worried about unidentified creatures ambushing him. He had seen a lot of things in this universe, and many of those things frightened him. Chief Rourke clicked the radar panel on the monitor. A map came up with several large X's approaching Spaceman Spartacus. Chief Rourke knew that this meant trouble. He was afraid for his friend, so he shouted, Spartacus, get out of there, now! So go ahead and hit pause, and give yourself a second. What is the point of view of this story? Okay, let's move on. Psst! Do you know the answer to number 19? A voice whispered behind me. I knew it was Warren. I was not fond of Warren. He was always playing around in class when I was trying to learn. He was always earning our class double homework. Can you tell what point of view it is? Hit pause and jot down what you think. I'm going to move on. Number three. Chino heard the birds. This was a good sign. The men had been at sea for over a month. Chino knew that birds meant that land was near. This pleased him greatly. Captain Oswald, shouted Chino. There be birds in the sky. Captain Oswald stroked his beard. He was pleased with the news, but he was more pleased with his beard. It felt smooth and luxurious. Very good. Very smooth, replied Captain Oswald. The captain's words confused Chino. Hit pause and jot down what you think. Number four. Daniel was nervous about going to Patricia's birthday party. He was afraid that he wouldn't know anyone but Patricia, and she would be so busy with her guests. Mom, I don't want to go to the party. Daniel's mother furrowed her brow and said, Daniel, we already told her we'd be there. We bought her a present. We have to go and give it to her. Daniel shook his head. He still didn't want to go to the party. His mom put her hand on his shoulder. Go ahead and hit pause and try to figure out this last example. All right, let's start with this last one. First question, is an eye telling the story or is it a narrator? This one is told by a narrator. Very good. Now, next question, do we hear one character's thoughts or multiple? Here, we only hear Daniel's, so it must be limited. Number three, we hear First question, narrator or I telling the story? Told by a narrator. Next question, do we hear one character's thoughts or multiple? We hear multiple, so this must be omniscient. Number two. First question, is an I telling the story or is it a narrator? It's an I that is telling the story, so this must be first person. Number one, is it an I or a narrator? Clearly a narrator. Do we hear one character's thoughts or multiple? We hear Spaceman and Chief O'Rourke's thoughts. So that must be omniscient. So very good. Hopefully you did pretty well. All right. Let's talk through a few more books. And then that's actually as far as we got in class today on Monday. So I'll talk to you about a few more books uh, on Wednesday uh, if you guys are in the A group or Thursday if you're in the, the B group. All right. But let's talk about a few more. So Warcross is... Unlike any book I've ever read before, it is the most similar to a video game of any book I've ever read. It is just, it reads like a video game. Partly because it actually is a video game. Warcross is a video game that thousands, millions of people play in this book. Um, and in fact, there's a huge tournament, like an international tournament, where gamers from all over the world, they compete. Uh to, you know, be the best team. So, what else should I say about this without giving too much away? Basically, the main character, she uh, does something she shouldn't do. She thinks she's going to get in big trouble with the creators of the Warcross game, but instead, she gets selected to actually be in the Warcross tournament. Wildcard is the sequel to Warcross. So if you like Warcross, you'd like Wildcard. I'm not going to talk to you about this book. 
Um, but that's okay. Am I talking to you about that one? I will talk to you about this one. So Crossover by Kwame Alexander is a poem that is written similar to poetry. So the words don't go to the end of the page. All right? They're kind of uh, shorter lines. Uh, not exactly, you know, sometimes they are full sentences, sometimes not. But either way, don't let that scare you. It's super easy to read. Uh, in fact, it's probably easier to read because it's so much shorter. It's, you know, the, again, the words don't go to the end of the page. But it's about these two boys who play on the same basketball team. They're twins. One brother is better than the other, and that causes a lot of problems. All right? It causes a lot of jealousy and resentment. So it's a lot about brotherhood, and it's a lot about basketball. Swing is very similar, about two friends who play basketball and music. Uh, and again, there's some, you know, friend rivalry. Uh, you know, certain things get in the way of friendships. Esperanza Rising is epic. It is so fabulous. Esperanza, she uh, lives in Mexico. Her family owns a grape, like a vineyard, and they make wine. But then one day, there's a fire that is a little mysterious, and Esperanza and her whole family have to move to California to become uh, migrant workers. Super powerful. I knew so little about um, migrant workers and what their lives were like. And it was this book was an eye-opener for me. And it's just so beautifully written. I know that if you give this book a chance, you will love it. All right? You will be furious for Esperanza. You will be rooting for her. Um, it is just such a good book. This Echo is by uh, the same author. It's about this harmonica which um, is kind of magical in a way. This harmonica uh, ends up in the hands of four different people, all right? And this story uh, flips back and forth between four different points of view, four different stories. And they're all set during a different time period. They're all set during, you know, a different historical time period. So one of those time periods is Nazi Germany, okay? One of those periods is in America, and at, when you're reading the book bit by bit, you don't realize really how the stories are connected, you know, except, well, obviously the harmonica. But eventually you realize, wow, these stories are really connected, which is super satisfying as a reader. You try to piece it together, like, hey, how does this story fit in with that one? And it's kind of like a mystery in that they don't fit together until the end. So I loved this book, um, and, you know, I... I think every human would love this book. It is just, it's really satisfying how they, the stories all come together. The Ghost series. So the Ghost series is, uh, each one of these books is told from a different character's point of view. Um, they're all on the same track team getting ready for the big city divisional meet. And each character has just different trials, different tribulations, different conflicts. So Ghost, when he was younger, his his dad like lost it and he actually his dad tried to kill him and his mom. So that's a pretty big deal, right? I mean that that would, you know, affect anyone, right? So Ghost, he's got some things in his past that he, you know, he doesn't want to talk about. Um and maybe joining the track team will help him to open up and, uh, you know. And anywho, very good series. It's also written very colloquially. It is written the way that people talk nowadays. All right, so uh, Jason Reynolds really captures the way that people talk. Long Way Down is about vengeance. All right, the main character, his older brother was murdered. His older brother was a uh, victim of gang violence. And now he is taking matters into his own hands. He is going to get revenge for the, 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 the boy that killed his brother. He's in an elevator. He has a gun. And he is on his way to get revenge. The whole story takes place uh, in that elevator. This book is so powerful it will make you think 
uh, and it will make you question who you are as a person. It'll make you question, you know, what would you do if you were, you know, experiencing this much hurt, right? Long Walk to Water is all about this boy named Salva who he's at school and all of a sudden shots ring out. And uh, everyone says, just run. So they're in Sudan and there's a civil war that gets closer and closer and closer. And one day he Salva's at school and he hears run and he takes off running and he doesn't look back. Now his school is already six miles away from uh, his house. And Salva is running the opposite way of his house. So he has no idea what happened with his family. He's just running with all these people who have just... They didn't even pack up. They just left. They just ran because, you know, they are refugees. They are seeking refuge from the war. Now, one of the big problems is Sudan is near a desert. So it is truly a long walk to water. Will Salva make it? Uh, this is based on a true story. So super powerful um, story about you know, human endurance and hard work and working together um, and definitely very eye-opening about, I believe the conflict in Sudan is the longest conflict in human history, which is just unbelievable. Uh, Mrs. Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children uh, is about a school um, that uh, a young boy learns about He's like going through his grandfather's things and he uh, comes to learn um, that his grandfather went to a school um, and his grandfather's been kind of, you know, not telling the truth about everything. As you can see in the picture, that girl is floating. So this school that the grandfather went to is not like a normal school. So anywho, a very exciting mystery um, that will have you on the edge of your seat, truly. Um, and the descriptions of the island where the story takes place are really cool. Rules is all about this girl and her brother. Now, her brother has uh, autism. And he excels when there are lots of clear, cut, dry rules. Like, hey, we go to bed at this time. Um... That is when her brother does really well, but sometimes, you know, life happens and you got to go to bed at 7.05 instead of 7 o'clock exactly. Um, the problem is that when things don't work out quite so right, her brother really freaks out. So this story is a really great story about family um, and, uh, you know, very interesting. You know, it's a story about somebody who has autism. Um, so it, it's great to learn about the struggles and the joys that different types of people, you know, experience. This book is a must read. California, in the near future, all of a sudden, announcement, the tap has run dry. No more water. You go to the sink, you turn it on, nothing. You go to flush the toilet, nothing. What would you do? Maybe go to the store to get some water. Well, that's what everybody else does. Okay. So after about two or three days, people start getting really desperate because you need water to survive. So things get absolutely crazy. The end of this book, it, it will just blow you away. It is the most insane ending to any book I have ever read. Truly. It will just blow you away. It's so exciting. Pax, I love this book. Pax is told from the point of view of a fox and also from the point of view of a uh, young boy who becomes friends with this fox. And it's super convincing. Penny Pecker does a great job of uh, getting into the mind of a fox. Like when you hear the fox telling the story, it really makes you think, oh yeah, I could actually see a fox think that or, you know think that when they smell food. So, uh, great story. A story about fathers and sons and pets and also a war story. But I love this story. I can't recommend it enough. I'm going to stop here, okay? 
So again, the homework for you guys uh, is if you are in the A group, let me go back to that slide. If you are in the A group, right, make sure you have a book by Friday. If you are in the B group, make sure you have a book by Monday. All right, now I don't need you to send me a picture or anything like that. I trust that you will have a book. Um, in fact, what I'll probably do is on Friday, uh, A group, I'll probably send you a form that just says, hey, what's your name and what book are you reading? And same with the B group. On Monday, I'll send you a form that says, hey, what's your name and what book are you reading? So that's how I'll know what book you're reading. Okay, so I won't have you submit a picture or anything crazy like that. Okay, but that's the only homework. Okay, so make sure you go back through and double check. Check Power School. Make sure you have all of your work that was assigned during remote learning. And make sure you have it done before Friday. All right. Have a great day. I missed you guys today in class, uh, but I can't wait uh, to see you guys uh, soon. Catch you guys later.